All right, welcome to another song title challenge where the question is, Climbers, how would you write this one? Are you doing the good work you need to do on your title before you walk into that writing room? Uh, this is a episode where Climbers, listeners to this podcast, send in their song titles to info at daredevilproduction.com. Production is singular. There is no S. Info at daredevilproduction.com. And I put them in a folder. You need to put a uh, song title challenge in the subject line or STC in the subject line so it gets into the right folder. If you don't, it won't. Okay. Um, help me out. I get a boatload of emails every day. I got to, I, I want to make sure that, that yours gets a chance, you know, so uh, make sure that works out. And then I spring the title live on the podcast here as we're recording it to Brent and to our esteemed guest who we're about to introduce in a second. And then the three of us try to cook up a, I don't know, five or six different conceptual angles for writing that title. Sometimes the first thing that you think about is the right thing. That's the, that's the best way to go. But a lot of times it's cliche, it's cheese, and you can take a mundane title like The Dance. Just think about how The Dance looks in a hookbook. Wah, wah. You know, and then and then you cook up an angle on it, and all of a sudden it's like, whoop, 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 whoop. like it's like it's like huge, and it's an epic song that will last forever in infamy and blah blah blah. So anyway, this is a fun creative exercise. It's not a co-write in any way, shape, or form. You can use all of what we say. You can use none of what we say. We do demand to be invited to the number one party, and uh, you know the sort of byproduct that we found from doing this was that this is an incredible exercise. It takes you fifteen or twenty minutes to breathe new life into super old hooks because you put a hook in a hook book and you had it had enough energy on it for you to kind of want to put that in the book, and then for whatever reason it, it it doesn't get wrote right. So. Then you go back and you look at that, but over time it kind of wilts like lettuce. It, the energy sort of falls off on it. And you're like, I don't even remember why I put that in there because it's a crazy title or whatever. But then if you do this song title challenge, all of a sudden you can twist something around and it becomes super exciting. And if you're like my boy Brent here, it turns into cuts and it gets on a radio. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a hell of a good thing. So um, uh, Brent, why don't you introduce our, our guest here? I'm super excited. Yes, our guest is a uh, native of Canada. He is on Warner Canada. He's had uh, multiple number one hits on the Canadian country music chart, including songs Airwaves, Drink About Me, A Few Good Stories, Make a Life Not a Living. Uh, so we first, uh, we were talking about it off air. We first met uh, about 12 years ago uh, when you were making a trip down to Nashville. And so we're finally circling back around. It, it feels like it's about, been about 12 years, but you've held up a lot, lot better than I have. So... Brent Kissel, welcome to The Climb. Yeah, welcome. Well, thank you for saying yes. Hey, fellas. Thank you very much for having me. And it's crazy to think how fast time goes by because I remember the writer room and I remember mm -hmm. hanging out with Ted Hewitt, who was my producer at the time with yeah. you, Brent. And, and you know, and you you take a couple of titles back and forth and before you know it, you've got a song. And I still remember the chorus, you know, a, a dozen years later. It's very, very special that we do get a chance to reconnect. And what a great idea this is. Yeah, this is a lot of fun. So, uh, and you know, when Johnny springs us on us, we are not constrained by genre. Um, so if you get a reggae idea for this, you know, angle for this, throw it out there. So this is just, uh, throwing, as Johnny likes to say, throw it, what all the spaghetti against the wall, see what sticks. And, you know, we just want to encourage people that oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes the, the idea that you need to go with the angle you need to go with is not the first one. Usually it's the more cliche ones that everybody else is going to think about. And so if we want to go past that and try to find something a little more interesting. So we just want to be encouraging uh, and also just let people know it's okay to dare to suck. And, and some of the ideas and angles we throw out, That's right. <laughs> dare not to suck. great, uh, but this is a safe space. So we're, you know, we're the, we're the human cannibals here. So there you go. And before, before we get into this, I have, I have to get to the bottom of something here um, on the podcast. Y'all can't see this. Cause we got video going that that'll end up going up on YouTube here once we get our butts wired together. But um, Brett has like a tattoo on his forearm that looks, it's a bunch of numbers. So it's one of three things. It's either the birth dates of your children, a combination to three different locks, right? <laughs> or uh, possibly some kind of Fibonacci sequence. Like what, what's up with the tattoos? 
Uh, well, I'm very proud of the tattoos. And yeah, your first instinct was the right instinct. They are <laughs> the first dates of, of, of my little kids. And uh, my wife and I just uh, a couple days ago had our fourth little baby. Oh, so we God. are. Thank you. Yeah, we're, we're over the moon. You know, we love our family with all our hearts. So we've got two daughters and now two sons. So nice. our, we've got a, a pretty complete little family. And I got a tattoo appointment in three days to go get the fourth birthday uh, right underneath and kind of complete my uh, my arm uh, artwork. Yeah, if you say keep that, having that, kids, that's a lockdown a baby right there, y'all. That's a lockdown baby. I wonder if there was a big <laughs> swell. And you, you remember like when they had the yes. blackout in New York? And uh, there was that blackout and there was like this huge, like massive burst of baby births, like within like later. that with, yeah, like nine months later, 10 months later. And, uh, and I wonder, like, I wonder if that happened during the lockdown, like how many people just, you know, it'd be know. the Are next. Are you kidding me? Everybody, Kane <laughs> Brown, Thomas Rhett, us, every, every artist, every band member, every crew member. It's crazy. Like the class of what, what's 18 years from 2020 like literally the class of 2038 and 39 is going to be huge. Yeah, that's right. Even oh. in a small town, like where I grew up, my graduating class in Delavan, Wisconsin, I think it was like 186 people. You know, it's probably gonna be like 400, like in, in 2038. <laughs> yeah, everyone's coming off the road. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm home. Yeah. What do we want to do? Over a long time. All right. So let's get going on this. Today's All right. um, song title comes from a longtime climber and somebody that I just really dig. I know this cat. I, I worked with him a little bit. His name is Cash Memphis. Cash. And he is a like spiritual rapper. Um, hip Christian Hip hop. Hip. What? Hip hop. Yeah. I think. Yeah. And so he and I and so uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell the title and then I'm going to give a hot take on this before we kind of dig into it. So the title is. Automatic teller machine. <laughs> Automatic teller machine. And I I think that oh my God. I think there's like a million different ways you can go with this. And I've got five hundred thousand of them already in my head as I as okay. I as I type this out and, and send out the invites for you guys to come onto the podcast platform. So um man, I love it. And 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 I, I think um there's, there's just so many, there's so many ways that this can go, you know? Uh, <clears throat> cash. I don't like you as much as I used to, buddy. I um, know. I like it. I'm like, okay. So oh I'll, 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 I'll kick it off here. Yeah. I'll kick it off here. So, um, when I did the, a uh, couple of projects in LA with this, uh, rock band called Candy Grand for Mongo, they were all like friends. They're all like buds. And one of the songs we had was uh, called Shannon told me, and it was written by one of our friends, like, all of us, the band started because we were the husbands of the wives that were all super tight. And yeah. so you, you, go, you have to go to these parties and you end up hanging out and you're like, oh my God, oh, you play? Yeah, well, we should start a band. Okay. You know, yeah. that, way, that way we don't have to be like the weird, awkward, oh, well, we're at this stupid party and nobody knows everybody except for the girls and blah, blah, blah. So, uh, but Shannon was this sort of, um, she was the gossip the gossip girl yeah. in the group, right? And so, I mean, the song started out, you know, if you want the world to know, tell Shannon it's a secret, right? That's the, that's the opening, <laughs> the opening line. I just think so like automatic that's teller cool. machine, like, you know, it's, it's yeah, uh, telling everything. It, it could be about a gossip. <clears throat> it could be about a gossip girl. I'm thinking about, uh, it could be, um, I think of, um, there's a really funny routine and it's from a, a disgraced comedian these days, but Bill Cosby, talking about his kids where he's wow. he refers to one kid as the informer you know and then guess what he didn't do what you said you know yeah. so that it could be about a kid you know the automatic teller machine and then the third thing i think of like just a, a an idea to go down would be like what money comes out of the automatic teller machine so what does that right. mean right what does that mm -hmm. mean what, can, what, what like what, there's a million ways you could go with that yeah it's Man, to me, the challenge is how does that sing? You know, because the first thing I'm going to do is like throw it ATM and yeah, you know, ATM can sing at least better. I mean, Brett's the singer here. I'm certainly not, but uh, that would be my challenge on that. But thankfully, we don't have to make it sing today. We're just thinking conceptually. So, yeah, I, I, I think, yeah, it's, it's, it's a very, it's, it's a very difficult title. And, you know, in previous generations uh, or, you know, eras of, of my own career, 
I would probably pass on a title like that real quick. But mm-hmm. now I, I do like the opportunity to kind of sit through it and see where this could go because you just never, never, ever know what's what's going to hit. And there are some wild titles in in different genres, mm-hmm. like you know, all about that bass. Okay, yeah. what what does that mean? Okay, well, bass means booty, and yeah. like you know, and it's bottom and, end. Wow, like what a cool and bottom end, and like what a what a cool song that turned out to be. So now the way that I am, my brain is going, okay, well, actually, could we make this work? And actually, could we make it cool? And the way you said ATM Mm -hmm. is way easier to rhyme. Maybe the title is called automatic teller machine, but it's like girl. And it's, if it was, it was a hip hop thing because country boys wouldn't necessarily say this, but if it was a little bit more hip hop or or a pop genre, it's like, girl, I ain't your ATM. Like you Mm -hmm. can't just come out and, and take money and take love whenever you want. Right. You know, Ooh, your ATM, like da, 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 roll da, up 24 then, hour service and yeah exactly you know yeah um uh, and you know either that or there's or there's going to be fees or you're going to have to fill me up again yeah you know, girl i ain't your atm and dad i gotta fill me up again like then maybe all of a sudden it goes and it's a girl who's taking advantage of a guy and that's mm. our process that's kind of where my head went yeah, I think that could definitely work as as an analogy is like, you know, the bank account that just bounced, man. You got no funds, you know, sorry, you know. Um, and I think, yeah, for a hip hop thing, you might be able to say automatic teller machine like cash could probably make it sound cool. Like, yeah, because he could roll that it. because, yeah, like the he because the way he Just raps, like he could, he'd rap yeah, yeah, yeah. it and it could work. That's a good uh, point. Well, like yeah. it works with the rap, maybe not with the, with the melody. ATM yeah. on now, the melody, automatic teller machine on the rap. Exactly. Well, yeah. yeah, and I think automatic teller machine is so many syllables that actually that's kind of an Eminem thing that he would do. Like there's so many syllables that come in certain parts of his songs, mm-hmm. but in this particular thing, like automatic teller machine, the da 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 you got to be kidding me. This, this is my first time on the podcast, and this is what you throw out there, John? Like, hey, we didn't tell you it was going to be all puppy dogs and ice cream here, pal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but now I'm like, hold it. This actually could have some legs. Yeah. If, the same way you were saying, Brent, of like, and, and, and that's how, how it goes usually in the room with me is I start writing down on whether my phone, my laptop, or just piece of paper, all these different ideas like that relate to it. No mm-hmm. funds check bounce no balance Bro. insufficient um mm-hmm. <clears throat> you know da, 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 Ooh, like yeah. different da, 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 insufficient and that like it's it actually can get pretty cool you know yeah I mean, hey, and i got i got another ch- so i think and like just the way that you sort of rhythmically kind of rattled that off brett um i mean it could be a very freaking unique country song mm-hmm. where but but you kind of wrap the hook Right. Like you yeah. got all these great melodies and everything. And maybe it's like, you know how um, American kids, it's got that. I don't know. What do you call that? It's like a second hook. It's kind You're of the growing up in little pink houses, making out on living room couches, blowing that smoke on Saturday night. A little messed up, but we're all, all right. Yeah. And, and that's not the it's that's not the not chorus, the chorus like though. It's like this. Post. It's a post hook. Like it Something, could be yeah. like a post hook. That's just a rap. You know what I mean? That's mm-hmm. just like that. I mean, I can just hear it like doubled and super cool. And that, like everybody could be, it'd be infectious, infectious rap. Cause everybody could just like pop along with that, like live. Mm-hmm. And it would be a killer. That could be a great song. And, and what if, uh, so I think the, the ATM like analogy of like, you know, she just, you know, using me for my money or whatever. Um, and I'm not that is, is works is like how do we you know how do we turn it positive and that's part of the fun of this because yeah i would look at this title and go look away from it as fast as i could if you know it's just in my hook book but the fun is diving into it what if it's like you know i'm her yeah i'm her atm if because i'm the automatic teller machine tell her she's beautiful tell her she's wonderful tell her how much i need her Tell her she's the only there one. We go. It's there just automatic, go. man. I'm our automatic <laughs> killing machine. Tell her everything she wants now, to hear. Now, you know? even though love her ATM, that, that that is really cool to spin it in that positive way. Mm-hmm. But then I try to bring it back to the most relatable thing for <laughs> for Middle America and the most mm-hmm. relatable thing for you know 
blue collar Canadians that, that yeah. so many of those are, are my fans that is that actually something you would say? I, I think about it. Whereas right. in, in, in that regard of what you had just said, yes, it's very cool and it's very unique, but you know, I just don't know if you're, if we're going to just say, I tell her that I love her, I tell her that I need her, yeah. then it's kind of just easier to go cliche, get yeah. rid of the title and just write the song about, I love you, baby. You're the one. And it's just yeah. as simple as that. And that song has been written 700 times in Nashville this year. And it's only March, but right. it still works. <laughs> if you go negative with it and you're standing up for yourself, mm-hmm. it's also tough because a lot of country boys don't do that. Country right. girls do that. And I'm, I'm not being, I'm definitely not being sexist. And I'm not trying to say that this is like what the male and the female roles need to be. But where you find success in country music is the girl doesn't need the man. She right. doesn't. Carrie Underwood has proven that, that if you screw me over, I'm going to wreck your truck and I'm going to make you pay. And Miranda Lambert has said that many times. Mm-hmm. So yeah. very hard for a country boy to say, girl, you're taking advantage of me and I ain't going to do it anymore. Whereas in other genres, I think you could get away with that. Whereas yeah. a country guy in a lot of ways, Thomas Rhett is kind of always the hero. Thomas oh, yeah. Rhett is not going to tell his beautiful wife, Lauren, you are using me like an ATM. I'm working my ass off. You're doing nothing and you're <laughs> right. out. That would never fly in country music. No, not going to happen. But you're right. You're right about that. In rap, I mean, you got gold digger, right? I ain't saying she's a gold digger, but yeah. you know, it, 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 so that that would you know that it could go negative, and and definitely be a hip hop thing that would work. Um, mm-hmm. But what about? Um, see, I like the teller part. Yeah, we're uh, trying to find a way to. That's kind of a natural thing. Is like look at each word and say, how can we play off this? And so teller is kind of a probably the easiest word off that to, to play what if, of. Okay. What yeah. about this? Maybe this is too much of a stretch. It might be too complex, but there are, you know, there are some relationships where, uh, you know, on the surface, right. And they work, they're great relationships. They work well, but on the surface, like it, it, it would seem like the, the, um, the enforcer is the female. Yeah. Right. And so like, and this, so it, what if we put the girl up on the pedestal, and and we sort of celebrate that, right? Like she's mm-hmm. the automatic teller machine, you know. That and you, you know, like the, the the and she's a girl that just won't take shit from anybody, you know. She's like, oh, yeah. uh-uh, you know. And so she'll tell she's, you, she'll tell her. Yeah, <laughs> that and she's money, right? She's money yeah. all day long, you know. Now that's good. She's she's money. She's like an ATM. Yeah, right. <laughs> It's just money all day long. ATM always <laughs> telling me what? No. Um, so yeah. Okay. What else? Oh, well, that's good. Always telling it, me. Now, now we ATM. put it back on where she's always raising up the guy. It could be. Yeah. I mean, she could always be telling you good or bad. And I going back to what Brett said, I think it's true because I'm definitely not an ATM to my wife as much as I want to be. Like I'm more of a, you know, the five love languages, like words of affirmation. That's definitely me. And yeah. so I'm, I'm better about that than some, but not as good as others. You know, it's like not as good as I want to be yours. So that could even be a thing. Like I want to be your ATM. I want to be like, maybe it's somebody who's in a relationship and it's like, I want to be your ATM. I want to give her everything she needs, but I also want to be the automatic teller machine automatically tell her because I don't open up my feelings as much. And I wish it were just automatic. <clears throat> like I Ooh. wish it were, I wish I were an ATM. I wish I could just, you know, we're, but I don't, I step in it or it comes out wrong. Or I, I think about it later. I'm not as open with my, you know, how much I value her and tell her that's that relatable right there. Might I be like more that. relatable as well. Uh, and this, I want to be your ATM is funny because, but you can mean it in both ways. Like I, I want to shower her with money and stuff, but it's, um, I don't know, but it's fun to, to play with these different ideas. Well, what, okay. Yeah. So what about the, I, I'm thinking of um, God bless the boy. Mm-hmm. Cody Johnson, and it's just all about like it all came, it all came around from from his daughter, you know, just yeah. being uh, five years old, just being incorrigible, you know. Yeah. So <clears throat> what what if you do something like that? I mean, that's obviously like a really really great sort of concept where, and, and you sort of do go with that sort of informer thing, like she's an automatic teller machine. Where I mean, how many times is because kids always tell the truth? How many times ha- have 
you know, your kids like embarrassed you, man. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Where they no, said they, something all the time. <laughs> they can't lie. They, yeah. they, they can't lie. They don't lie. Yeah. yeah. I mean, my wife and I were like, we better be living right because Quill is going to tell everybody in the world whatever's going on, whatever our business is. If you overhear that, you will too. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. That, I mean, how many great be, stories, yeah. how much good furniture could you pull out of some just straight up honest stories that happened to you where your kid was like, you know, wh- what was that? You know, and it, it, it could be, it could be even just, it doesn't mean that you're living wrong or anything. It'd just be something where they said, yeah, you know, it's, it's just something at the wrong time because they don't lie. It's like he's, we got to remember she's the automatic teller machine. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then there's there there's another angle that that could go that um that has been relatable in country music in a, in a lot of ways, and it's the the young couple. They don't have to be young, but it's 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 the it's the young couple that don't have a lot of money, but boy, mm. they sure dream big. And so yeah. it's one of the things about painting the picture of of Paris and Grand Canyon and. Um, in, in New York City skyline <clears throat> and in a Hawaii sunset. And, you know, but I, I, I can't afford that. But, you know, if I was an ATM, one day I'll get there. And then you, you know, and you may not be able to take out money, but you can just take out and withdraw all the love that you want. And I, I wish I could do that for you. But, yeah. and, you know, even though, and, but now this is a very interesting thing. So you, you see the three of us on this call. And so I had it really good in my head. And I thought about it, but it didn't come out my mouth the way that I wanted it to. So then I also kind of withdraw in a moment. I'm like, no, that actually didn't hit. And it didn't all come together the way that I had anticipated. So that's a very, very special thing about being in the room with either guys, you know, or guys you don't know, and either being embarrassed and be like, yeah, that idea really didn't fly or (laughs) be like, ah, whatever. I'm with my buddies. They know that I'm good for at least one idea a day, but that wasn't it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh man i know that feeling for sure but, yeah. you, but you gotta yeah you gotta take those swings or you know yeah, i like you know it. from the from like from what you just said brett um it, yeah it could be kind of like a a sort of um modest angle like uh you know buy me a boat right where it's like if i had a million dollars you could buy me a boat and a truck to pull it you know yeah. and and it's just all about not needing anything but the you know, the, 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 uh, you know, maybe not needing all that stuff. Like, and I want to be, but here's the, here's what I can't. So I like that. Like that angle is great. Like you spelled it out. And so it's like, you know, we could do this. We could, you know, Paris and um, Spain and Italy and blah, 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 and all this stuff. But you know what? I'm going to be your ATM right here. And, and what are, what that's, that's three letters. Like there's, what else can we, what other words could mean ATM that could be, you know, attached to that, you know, all that matters. Um, oh, 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 that's that just happened. Baxter name. We should make that. a No. Um, yeah, that's yeah. It's ATMs. And so that could be. Yeah. I, what if it's like, I want to be all these other things, but all I feel like is your automatic teller machine. I want to be all that matter. I want to be, your, you know, I want to be your ATM. I want to be all that matters. I want to be all the man you need. I want to be. You know, whatever, yeah. and it's better. I just feel like it's automatic teller. Machine. <laughs> that's an that's an, that's fun. That's interesting. <laughs> and then there's another thing that I that I was thinking about that is just a story song, mm-hmm. um, like uh, Billy Currington's "Good Directions." Yeah, where that song just it, it there's so much furniture and everything is so descriptive, and it's like you know. Um, you know, Friday at five, da, 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 you know, went to the quick stop and you know, six pack and this and that. And, and, you know, got a slim gym and a Gatorade and, a, yeah. you know, you know, and, and everything like that. And then I saw, and, you know, I pulled out some money and the best thing I ever seen is that a girl by that automatic teller machine. And it's just yeah. like, it just is centered around that one piece of literal furniture at the Seven oh, Eleven, and how you meet and how you meet <laughs> this girl. And then, you know, and, and it's and it's just this whole feeling that captures. Yeah. It's a three minute song about a thirty second encounter at the automatic teller machine at the ATM, or yeah. she's the girl at the bank. Well, and you saying, keep going. If, yeah, the ATM broke that it wasn't working that day. So thank God for that broken not you know ATM or whatever because I had to go to the window and I haven't seen that ATM in years because I'm <laughs> always going through the drive at the window with her, you know. Um, yeah, that could be that could be fun too, and, and that then you literally, off that, you literally know, freaking money. happened to me. Oh yeah, <laughs> straight up. 
that happened to me. Like that, there, the, it was out of service. The ATM was out of service. I go in, I and I and I for I don't know for about eight months to a year or something. I dated my freaking banker. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, See, there you go. There you go. And now you're talking about true life experience. Yep, yep. Oh, my gosh. And you didn't think of that angle, Johnny. Uh -uh. (laughs) Uh-uh. Didn't come to mind. Or, you know, she, you know, you're, you you know, like country music, you know, you're you're the hero. She, um, for some reason, she couldn't pay for her gas and the card wasn't working and she couldn't pull out cash, you know, from from the ATM. And you were there and he said, don't worry, you know, I got it. And, Mm. uh, but, but you owe me a coffee, you know, one of these days or pay it forward. Maybe it's, you know, uh, Mm. Clay Walker, Charlie pride, you know, don't let the chain of love end with you. Yeah. And it, it's all centered around the physical automatic teller machine too. That could be the concept. And, and Mm. a thing too, like, uh, you know, thinking of cash Memphis, knowing that he does like, you know, hip hospital, like, you know, uh, Christian hip hop and, and stuff. And he's also a singer and stuff too, but going, okay, I'm here to be an ATM. I'm here to give. I'm not here to take deposits, right? My whole life should be about giving, you know, giving what the Lord gave me, you know, oh. be, a, be, a, be a flow through, right? The ATM doesn't make the money, but the ATM, you know, the money comes from other places and it, it gives it out. Oh, and is that a metaphor for, t- for testifying? Is that it, a metaphor for preaching? It like, could be like, I just want to testify, be an automatic teller machine tell you know the tell the gospel tell the good news or help others like you know um like james that james taylor song that's why i'm here you know hey james can i borrow your truck that's why i'm here you know uh that yeah. sort of thing could be too like that's why that's what i want to be you know that's what i'm here for that's what i want to be i don't always do it perfectly but you know i just want to be well, an automatic the, color machine you know and yeah and with with the acronyms you know all that matters, mm-hmm. you know, all the, all, all the men you need, which obviously for, for the, you know, for the female role in the relationship. But if this is, mm-hmm. if this has to do with God, you know, it's like, always tell me, always yeah. trust me. Ooh, you know, I will yeah. be, I will be here <laughs> for you and I never run out. You know, you, you <clears> don't need anything. You don't need a password. You just always come to me. Always tell me, always trust me, you know? Yeah. And, and you know, that, that'll be the, ATM and God is the ATM of information and love and affirmation and just true goodness. All that yeah. is good, you know. <clears throat> and it never but, and yeah. it never it's never out of order. Yeah. It's never low on cash. It's never low on what you need. Never low you know? on funds. Yeah. So this uh, is interesting. It's like a great the, ATM, you know, not like a peace and prosperity. Yeah. Like I love Jesus, so I deserve a bigger house. But, uh, but he's like my grace ATM, like funds are always available. If I need forgiveness, if I need grace, if I need peace, if you know, that kind of stuff. So it's not, and so yeah. in, in a way it would twist, subvert that expectation of money to be, well, what's this ATM, what's this automatic teller machine given out that's more yeah. than money, more valuable. That could be fun too. Well, I'll, I'll tell you guys a little story. Um, earlier on in my, in my career, when I was a kid, um, I made, uh, you know, traditional country albums and mm-hmm. my grandma, who was very spiritual, she asked me to record a song that was her favorite and it's called the Royal Telephone. And it's huh. like, we may talk to Jesus through this Royal Telephone. Huh. And it, it was like this one line that you could talk to Jesus. Um, Central's never busy, always on the line. You can hear from heaven almost any time. Tis a royal service, free for one and all. When you get in trouble, give this royal line a call. And it was from 1919, and wow. it was from an old book, and I learned it, and 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 I and I recorded it. So that could be like the 2022 version is this automatic teller machine for the gospel and to, and to connect with Jesus at any time. Yeah. And so it's we're kind of making something old, new again, and re- recycling that concept, which is. Very cool how, you know, she must, she must be listening in on this call and, uh, you know, maybe helping us steer in that direction today. Nice. Yeah. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Cause it's, you know, it's all, it's, it's trying to find a new window to look into the same old room. You know, that's all yeah. we're trying to do is find a new window in, into the same room. You know, the same ideas, the same concepts that have been around forever. And it's like, how do we just find a, our own little twist on that? Um, well, there's yeah. there's a song I recorded called uh, "Drink About Me," as as you said at the beginning. And Matt Rogers and Ben Stennis wrote that song, 
And I, more times than I can count, people have come up to me and said, I can't believe that that wasn't written before. And I can't believe yeah. that it's like 2020, 2021. And we're just hearing that concept when it seems so simple. And yet yeah. here at mm-hmm. a, this ATM idea, I mean, if it, if it actually really hits and if we, we wrote that and it, it was just sonically and structurally sound and Ted Hewitt, I, he might've told me when we were writing together 12 years ago, this analogy where it says songs, you know, can have loose strings. And if you pull on a, sh- on a string, it can unravel the entire song. Yeah. So if this is such a big title and a big concept that it's either going to work brilliantly and everybody's going to be like, I can't believe you pulled that off and it is so great. Or you're going to pull on this loose thread and this loose thread. <laughs> it's going to unravel. They're going to look at Johnny D, Cash Memphis, <laughs> and, Huxter, and Brett Kissel and be like, you swung for the fences and it was the single biggest strikeout in the history of music world. <laughs> like this corkscrewed right into the ground. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's that's the challenge, but also the risk reward benefit with a very unique title and concept like this. Yeah, there you go. I think we got uh, probably eight to ten good looks at this. You guys, you you did well. You everybody did Thank good. You. <laughs> Jeez, All right, well, yeah, that, that brings us to the end of another killer song title challenge. Send your titles in. We need more titles all the time. Send them in to info at daredevilproduction.com. Put STC or song title challenge into the subject line. And you never know, you might get a major label artist that's going to hop on and help you help, you know, give you a North star on how to write those lyrics and make that happen. Uh, Brett Kissel, thank you so much for coming on saying yes. Hey, you're fun, dude. I like, we got to do this again. Like you're a good time. You're fun. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, it's an instant. Yes, fellas. This was Really good, and it got my brain working. I'm and I'm a little foggy, you know, with with being a new dad oh, again, and oh. and everything like that. I I'll tell you, my the amount of sleep I'm getting is is very very low. So this is a great exercise to see if that part of my brain still works. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. Well, thank you, Cash, for sending that in, man. I can't wait to see what you come up with it. This podcast exists because we want you to win. So keep on climbing, and we'll see you at the top.